When Microsoft first announced Copilot back in March of 2023, the ambition communicated was for an AI powered assistant that could help you from one end of your day to the other. And while the features that turned up were undeniably useful, Microsoft 365 Copilot is a reactive rather than proactive helper. A smart but unmotivated intern looking for instructions rather than an experienced executive assistant making the lives of those they are responsible for helping seamless without constant intervention. But now, with a new set of features coming to Copilot Studio to build autonomous agents triggered by external events rather than specific instructions, alongside a slightly more basic product in Copilot Actions to allow individual users to do something similar, we are moving toward the AI utopia where things just happen for us, eliminating the mental load of certain processes or work types. So in this video, let's look at autonomous agents in Copilot Studio. What makes them different to the types of automations you might previously set up with tools like Power Automate? And how can these integrate alongside Microsoft 365 Copilot's extensibility options to start to build that one end of the day to the other AI assistance Microsoft promised us? But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. So here I have Copilot Studio open with two different agents displayed. On the left, I have a declarative agent that extends Microsoft 365 Copilot. On the right, I have a custom agent that is part of Copilot Studio's underlying chatbot capabilities rather than something building on Copilot. And the big difference we can see is on the left, I have no trigger option but on the right I do. So in the context of this video, when talking about autonomous agents, we're going to be focusing on custom agents in Copilot Studio. Just as triggers are the starting point in Power Automate for initiating automated flows, in Copilot Studio, they are now the starting point for taking a reactive agent and turn it into something automated. And given what we know of automation across Microsoft 365, there's no prizes for guessing that Copilot Studio triggers are simply Power Automate flows, where Power Automate has been given a new capability to push prompts into an agent. So let's maximize that view of the custom agent and take a look at those triggers. What you're seeing here will be similar to what you see in Power Automate 2, as if I go ahead and create a trigger, you run through a very similar process as you would in a flow, and in fact, when you've completed added a trigger, you can see that all you've done is built an automated flow in Power Automate that can open directly from your agent. There are more than a thousand connectors available to you in Power Platform that allow you to connect into and get triggers from, in many cases, Microsoft first party and third party services. So all of that capability that you might already be familiar with is now coming as triggers to Copilot Studio 2. This new action to execute an agent in Copilot Studio essentially gives you the ability to just write any prompt you want into that experience. So by default, for many of these, you might just write in the body output of your trigger. For example, the body output of the when a new email arrives in Outlook trigger. But you can get more creative. I also imagine we'll quickly see examples springing up of more complex flows that eventually trigger an agent or even multiple agents. Right now though, it doesn't seem there's a capability to have your flow wait on your agent and get some output from it, as there is for example when you send a message from Power Automate into Teams. You might look at this and wonder why though this is exciting. We already have Power Automate, we already have access to generative AI in Power Automate, so why would you want to trigger an agent in the same way that you trigger an automated flow? Let's take a look at one of the examples Microsoft has showed us in recent weeks. This autonomous agent was built by McKinsey and is designed to make the process of starting client engagements more efficient when receiving an inquiry email. This is an obvious use of an automated trigger as the big benefit of this kind of agent is that it can work as soon as that inquiry happens. Without that trigger event for the agent, it would still potentially be useful, but a lot less so, as if the inquiry came in at 5.01 on a Friday, 
It might sit in an inbox until nine on Monday before anyone looks at it, but with an automated trigger, the process can complete itself over the weekend. The wide reaching benefits of generative AI are undeniable. And I firmly believe that tools like Microsoft 365 Copilot can be of tremendous help to nearly every information worker or data-driven process. However, in our excitement to focus on these potential benefits and innovative new technologies, sometimes we forget to talk enough about the new risks AI tools create. My new on-demand course, Responsible AI for Business Users, aims to plug this gap by giving users of Microsoft 365 Copilot or other similar tools the knowledge they need to navigate the power of AI safely and responsibly. With up to 80% of workers bringing their own AI tools with them, the risk to your data and reputation is very real. If you're a manager, you need to ensure your team has the knowledge to keep your business safe. And if you're the information worker benefiting from AI, you need to build your responsible AI skills so you don't end up in hot water through some inadvertent error with this new technology. You wouldn't expect workers in a factory to use a new piece of equipment without a safety briefing. You wouldn't hire a delivery driver without checking she has a valid license. So make sure those using AI in your workplace have the knowledge and skills they need to keep you safe. Check out the links below for more information. The work of the agent is defined using natural language instructions. When an email arrives, it extracts certain entities from it, like the client name. If it's missing information, it asks for clarity. It works out what industry the engagement is related to. It finds information on the team that delivers that work. It finds the most suitable partner for helping the client, updates that partner, and adds the work to a database. But you're probably wondering how instructions like this result in that happening. Well, first, like most agents, this one is given access to organizational knowledge that grounds the context of what it does. Then it's given a specific range of actions it can perform to do its job. In this case, you see a collection of inbuilt Power Automate connector actions, like sending an email with Outlook, and others that are custom flows built by the organization. The key thing here is that these are autonomous rather than just automated. The natural language instructions define expectations, and the knowledge and actions create guardrails as well as capabilities. So while this may look very similar to the types of assets you'd use to build an automated flow, the approach is actually quite different. In Power Automate, I could build out a similar process. I'd start with the same trigger, and I could use a similar AI-based approach to extract the data entities I need from that message using AI Builder or maybe a connection to the OpenAI API. I would need a condition to check if all the entities were completely found. And then if I needed a follow-up email to the sender, I could again use AI Builder to craft an appropriate email with a GPT model. Then I guess I'd search Dataverse for the engagement types maybe my CRM for past engagement information. Then I'd match this engagement against my team's capabilities and send the selected person an email or ask the engagement manager if it needed help. But then I'd need to wrap all this in steps of error checking to tell it what to do if any step failed. It's certainly not impossible, but doing this in an imperative rather than declarative way is significantly more complex and less flexible and a very small process change could result in a very large automation redesign. An agent is able to self-correct within the scope of its capabilities because the entire interaction is being interpreted and understood through the lens of generative AI, rather than AI just being used for certain steps. This AI understanding orchestrates the process, making autonomous agents a potentially far more flexible canvas for automation tasks than a platform like Power Automate. And with capabilities like detailed analytics of agent use and the ability to integrate directly into BizChat to ask for help, there are lots of things to be really excited about with these new tools. And most importantly, I think we should remember it's not a choice of one or the other. This demo perfectly shows Power Automate flows and autonomous agents being used in harmony. Pointing the agent at a Power Automate flow or even an API gives you complete control on the inputs and outputs of a particular part of a process. Whereas the autonomous instructions part gives you flexibility when you're not really sure what an input is going to look like and variations in that trigger and input are going to alter how the process steps and eventual output should work. 
This is about adding to our tools to digitally transform processes in a user-centric way, rather than throwing out everything we know and starting again. After all, this AIification is just a new face of that underlying digital transformation journey we've been on for decades. However, there are some things to consider before you jump in with both feet. If this overview is valuable to you, please do give it a like to help it get in front of more interested people. Also, if you want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We need to remember that there is a higher level of business risk with autonomous agents than with automated flows, as the steps of a flow you see on screen are defined tracks that the logic of your automation must follow. Whereas for autonomous agents, your instructions just create some guardrails that give a fair amount of flexibility to the agent. Now, we shouldn't overblow this risk. This isn't like some AI science fiction movie where you give your agent access to send an email and tell it its purpose is to help make your company more profitable. And before you know it, it's social engineered 10 major banks and stolen half the world's money on your behalf. That's not gonna happen. The risk is more subtle. For those who have prior experience with automation, we are used to tools like Power Automate either doing what we want or failing. And the biggest risk is not wrapping those potential failures in sufficient error mitigation to make your flows resilient under real world use. But with agents, this risk profile changes as the biggest risk isn't failure, but doing something completely unintended. For example, when testing my own version of the McKinsey Autonomous Agent, it did something unexpected and sent the client an email telling them we'd be happy to service their need. To be clear, this was due to an error on my part in how I had configured the agent. But it wasn't entirely clear from that configuration that this would be the outcome. You need to test robustly and iterate on your instructions. And frankly, I'd probably take a more conservative approach to giving these things any ability to email or message externally. The other thing to consider right now is despite the fact that external triggers are available to try out in custom agents, not all parts of the demos Microsoft has shown us are. The biggest missing part right now is the seamless integration with Microsoft 365 Copilot BizChat for the agent to ask for help. There are also limitations on knowledge types that can be used with triggers. So for example, the SharePoint knowledge shown in the demo wouldn't work reliably just yet. This is all shared in a Microsoft Learn article I'll share below. But these are really the key reasons I use one of Microsoft's demos to show these capabilities in this video, rather than just building my own. I must say, I am truly excited about the potential of autonomous agents, and I'll certainly be digging into this now that these capabilities are available in my tenant to better understand what are the best use cases for them for the types of businesses I often work with. And please do remember at this point, this capability is a public preview. So I fully expect some aspects that are lacking to be improved rapidly. And we know from mentions at Ignite that missing capabilities like custom agent biz chat integration are coming. What do you think of autonomous agents? Are you excited about integrating these into the AI tools you use to bring benefit to your business? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.